Every now and then it happens. Oh, cool. That moment when I'm experimenting with my brushes and I realize that a slight alteration makes for a fun, unexpected outcome. Hi everyone, I'm Liz and in today's video, Procreate Brush Making, I'm going to show you how to make, use, and alter a braided brush for your um, illustrations and also graphic design projects. So let's go ahead and get started. I have open here a 12 by 12 canvas at 300 dpi and that's just the canvas size I like to use when I'm creating stamps or brushes. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over to my palette and I'm going to tap the little uh, circle there and I'm going to double tap down here in the dark colors to set the color to black. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that I have calligraphy monoliner selected and this is just a standard brush that comes with Procreate. I'm going to go ahead and dial up that brush size to 100% and check my opacity to make sure that it's also completely opaque. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a slight little arch like this. And I'm going to hold it so that I can invoke the uh, smart shapes or quick shapes. And it's a nice little arch and I'm going to be satisfied with that. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my next slate, uh, shape and it's just a slight arch. Okay, just like that, I held and it gave me just the arch I wanted. And now I'm going to make a slightly more arced shape here. I'm going to bring this around and then I'm going to uh, make it join up with that little point down there and hold it so that it gives me um, sort of a tooth shape. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust this just slightly. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up above like that. And then I'm going to bring this in just a little bit like that. Okay. That looks like that's probably a pretty good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and live with that. Okay. So now I'm just going to double check and make sure that all the edges are um, touching so that I can pour my black into it. So I'm just going to grab that color and drag and drop. Whoops. I think I am going <laughs> to drag and drop right in there. Okay, perfect. And now I'm going to pause the video as I go ahead and shade this. And how I'm going to shade this is I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to uh, put little white streaks in there and little black streaks in there. And I'm going to use a smudge tool, same brush, and I'm going to go ahead and smudge the colors together to give this dimension and make it look a little bit more like hair. So I will be right back with um, my shaded uh, shape. Okay, now I have the shape where I want it in terms of how it's um, shaded. So it looks a little bit like hair, has a little bit of lines, but also has a little bit of shading in it. And I kind of want to have it a little longer. So I'm going to go over to my transform tool and I'm going to select freeform. And then I'm just going to gently pull this down just a little bit. So just a little bit longer there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is make a duplicate. So I'm going to just gently slide that over to the left and tap duplicate. And now with that duplicate selected, I'm going to hit my transform tool again, and I'm going to flip horizontally just like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and position this. I think I want to make this rotate just slightly out. So it's a little bit open, more open down here, but mostly I'm after sort of a bump that happens right here. So it looks like the hair is going in and there's a little extra hair. So it's got a little bit of a bump there. And let's see, I want to position this. I don't know how high up. I just want to play with it until I find where I want it. So I think somewhere around there looks pretty good. And now I'm going to select both of these layers together. So that one's already selected. I'm just going to gently go over to the right and drop and it selects both layers. And I'm going to go ahead and tap group and then just select the group. So not one of the layers is selected, but both of them are. Okay. And then I'm going to go back over to my transform tool and I actually want to rotate this just slightly um, so that the point is kind of basically pointing almost directly up and just something like that. Okay. And then I'm going to turn off the transform tool and then turn it back on because I want to have the perspective like this, where it's a, it's a rectangle inside of my square. And I have snapping turned on with a distance of three and the distance of three is actually the default distance. So if you have that, you'll be set. And now I want to move this. I want to position it so that I get golden lines. Okay. There we go. Golden line this way means that it's, uh, it's centered horizontally and now I want to do it vertically. So I want to look for a horizontal line. <laughs> so let's see, let's move this down. There we go. And there we go. We've got the two golden lines crisscrossing and that's where we want it. All right. The reason I'm centering that is so that when I put my finger down or the stylus point down, um, it should be the shape for the brush or stamps should be centered to that. So it just gives me a little more control for when I'm starting out my brushing process. Okay, once I have that done, I'm going to come over to my wrench here 
and I'm going to select copy canvas. Once I've copied my canvas, now I'm ready to make my brush. So I'm going to come over here to my brushes and I have a, a brush pack called the Essential Starters. And anybody who is on my email list, um, subscribe for free, can get access to the uh, the Essential Starters pack. And I highly recommend it because it just saves so much time because it's got some pre-made types of brushes ready for you to use. They're sort of templates. Anyway, we're using one of those templates. It's called Along the Path. So I'm going to select that and gently slide it over and duplicate it. And now I'm going to tap that duplicate and the duplicate will tell you, actually all the brushes tell you, uh, whether to replace the shape, in this case it is the shape, or to replace the grain. So since it's the shape, we're going to go into the shape, tap Edit, tap Import, and Paste. And so that copy that we made of our canvas is now here. And if it comes in like this, all you have to do is use two fingers and tap to invert it. So there you go. And then I'm going to tap Done. All right. Now, this is a little hard to see, so I'm actually going to increase the size a bit. So I'm going over to Properties, and I'm going to bring up the minimum size just so I can see what's happening. And this will become more obvious why I did this in just a moment. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is mess with my stroke path here. And I'm going to make them so that these close in and are riding right on top of each other. Okay, that looks pretty good. But one of the things you notice is there's a little bit of overlap here in the color. Maybe it's hard to see on the video, I'm not sure. But there's a little bit of overlap. And so this is why I want to well, actually bring this in just a little bit more even. Okay, just so that when we go around corners, there's no gaps. So now we're going to go to rendering. And the reason I have this so big is so that I could see what was happening with, um, with the art itself. So when I'm using grays, whites, and blacks together to create a stamp, there's going to be a little bit of transparency. So we want to have a little bit of control over that. So we're going to go to rendering. And I'm going to select light glaze. And that really helps make this braid look a lot more real. OK, so I like the way that's looking. And now it's time to test it. So I'm going to go ahead and tap Done. And oh, one thing I just remembered. All right, right now it's going in the opposite direction that I want it to. So there's one more setting I need to change. So under Shape, um, this follows a path, but it follows it a certain direction. So I want to just flip this over, this little green dot. I'm going to grab it and move it to about 270 or thereabouts, close enough. And that will flip the shape over so that it lays down properly when I make my braid. And then I'm going to tap Done. OK, and now I'm ready to go ahead and test. I like this color brown. And I'm just going to create a new layer on top of this. And I'm going to make invisible my group there. OK, so. Ooh, I like that. That looks pretty good. Let me make this a little bit smaller and just make sure that the braid is actually nice and tight. OK, it looks like I can probably get it a little closer. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my brush, tap it open, and hit the stroke path. And I have found somewhere around 30% actually is pretty good. So 32, uh, maybe for this particular brush, 32, 33. Let's see. Uh, I don't want too many separations here, so maybe just bring that in just a little bit more. You don't want to lose too much of the detail, but you want to make sure that it's holding together pretty well. So let me test this. This might be too much. It's at 29% right now, and I just want to make sure that the detail when I'm using color still shows through. So let's go ahead and tap Done. Still have our cool color there. And yeah, that's just a little too much here. Let me bring this up in size. It looks like too much overlapping, so what I want to do is dial that back a little bit again. And you know, you just play around with the size. Depending on how you've drawn this, you're going to play around with the size just a little bit. So I'm going to bring that back uh, and just draw a little slower. And I really like the look at about 33% here for the drawing that I made. Okay, let's test that. Yeah, that really looks more like a braid, so I'm satisfied with that. So that's our first brush. So we're going to create a duplicate of this brush that we've already made, and we're going to make one more adjustment. So duplicate it, and then tap the brush to open it. And now we're going to go over to Apple Pencil, and this particular adjustment that we're making requires an Apple Pencil. So what we want to do is turn our pressure all the way up to the max here for size, and now Let's go back to that really cool color that we had. And if you press hard, it makes it bigger and then 
lighter like that it makes it smaller and I love the look of that because hair when you braid it unless you're being very careful about the strands and the lengths oftentimes you're losing hair as you braid down so I want to have the option and so this looks pretty good I like it like this and then it occurred to me this is very very similar to another shape that I wanted to use this next brush the next adjustment is sort of a surprise so I want to save the surprise for last so let's go ahead and get started with the adjustments and then you'll see what we're using it for it's kind of cool okay we're gonna go back into our layers here and I'm gonna pop this open and we've got our two little I'm sorry our shape right here what I want to do is create a duplicate of this shape so duplicate of that group there and then I'm gonna go ahead and leave this top one I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to leave it as is. This bottom one, I'm just going to go ahead and tap the layer and merge down so that it's one shape. And now I'm going to go over to my adjustments panel here and I'm going to use Gaussian Blur and I'm going to just blur this up just a bit so that it, it's got a, a noticeable sort of shadow right here. Okay, and when I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to go ahead and tap that to, to turn off the adjustment. All right, and now I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, copy of this canvas here of this shape and now I'm just going to duplicate the template and we're going to start from there so duplicate okay and then I'm going to tap that open it up and change our shape paste okay and then done and I'm going to change the size on this so once again I can see what's going on with it I'm going to bring it up pretty good size there. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the stroke path and I'm going to change that. But this time I'm not going to quite do as much. I want it to be, you know what, actually there's something else I want to change. This isn't bad. I'm going to go ahead and tap done. But actually I remember I really want this to show up. I want this to look like a, a little bit of a, a knot. This might be giving away some of the secret here. So I'm going to go back to my brushes here and I'm going to create a layer just on top of my shapes here so I can change it if I need to. I'm going to change this back to actually sort of a, well, let's see, sort of a gray. There we go. And then with my brush, I want to select my um, calligraphy brush again, that monoliner. Okay, and then I want to kind of create a nice like little edge right here. Oops, I actually wanted that to be more of an arch, so let's try that again. Let's see if we can get an arch in there. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, and I should use that as a clipping mask, but first I'm going to go ahead and smudge this so that, um, yeah, there we go. I really want this to show up. That is pretty good because I want this to look, let's see if I can widen this up just a little bit. Right in there. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Maybe just a little bit, draw that down just a little bit more like that. Okay, and now I'm going to go over to my layers here and I'm just going to select, um, let's see clipping mask right there so it's actually clipping it to that top one there and lightening that color up just a little bit which is what I want to do okay so now let's go ahead and copy canvas and we're gonna go back over to our essential starters and then I'm gonna adjust that one with the new image so shape edit import paste Awesome. Okay, that's going to give me what I need. Done. Okay, now we look like it's more of a naughty sort of look to it, which I really, really like. So, okay, there's some things we need to do here. I think that the uh, stroke path is pretty good. I don't want this to follow the stroke though this time, which is it's kind of different. So I'm going to also go down to properties and turn on orient to screen. And now I'm going to go back to my shape and as you notice, the shape is pointing this way and I'm orienting it to screen. So I want to make sure that it's pointed in the direction that I want it to be pointed in. So I need to put this like, whoops, wait a minute. There we go. I need to put it back at 360 or zero. Depends on what you have yours set to originally. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, I love it. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so let's see. Is there anything else I need to do? I think this is it. So we're going to go ahead and tap done. All right, and I'm gonna come back in just a moment after I get this all set up for you. Okay, now I'm ready for the reveal. <laughs> so what I have here is a shirt 
uh, sort of dark, dark shirt. I'm using black for now um, because this particular brush pattern now will uh, look really good uh, because there will be like little holes and very, very dark shadow where it would be. So you would use like a, a dark uh, gray or a black or a charcoal or even a dark blue or some, some sort of dark color, possibly even just a dark version of the color that you're going to be using for your yarn. <laughs> so this is for knitting or for looking like it's knit, a knit texture. So let me demonstrate how this looks. So, um, okay, so it goes down in one direction and then when you bring your your uh, pen back up it's still the same direction so you just fill it in like this and I'm doing this purposely large so that you know I could illustrate how this works but through the magic of video here's a nice image where the uh, the sweater is already done and you have your braid so you can see how just this one shape gives you so much versatility Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate you for being here and sharing your time with me. And as always, I hope your day is amazing and that you make really awesome knit sweaters when you draw. <laughs> Take care, everyone.